and welcome to episode number 37 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I am Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting, sewing, crochet, and all of the other crafts that I occasionally do as well. So thank you so much for joining me. It really means a lot that you take some time out of your day to spend it with me. Thank you for checking out this podcast if this is your first time watching, and thank you so much for returning <laughs> if you're coming back. So, uh, and uh, thank you so much for the shout out that I've received this week. Uh, really amazing. So thank you, Lauren. Lauren is the uh, host of the Awesome Blossom Knits podcast. So uh, if you haven't already, please check her out. Uh, it's a good podcast. So um, yeah, let's get right into uh, the episode. And today I am wearing my cardigan. Uh, I think I called this the XOX cabled cardigan. It's a pattern that I kind of invented myself but never got around to actually writing up the pattern and I'm pretty sure that I would need to adjust something if I wanted to make this a pattern because look at what's going on here. There's just, my arms are not this wide. <laughs> I don't know uh, yeah, why I have so much positive ease here. Um, it's all over texture, like seat stitch texture, and it has this cable detail uh, along the bottom bands. I don't think it's a very visible p pattern because uh, the yarn is quite a rustic yarn. It's um, Tuanti wool. Uh, it's a Dutch uh, yarn company, I think, uh, although they produce all kinds of other wool products, so not just yarn. They also would sell, I think, complete completed socks or cardigans or sweaters, that type of thing, but they also sell the yarn and it's pure undyed uh, yarn from sheep that actually walk around in the Netherlands. So, um, and in fact, in the region where I was born and raised. So that was quite a special yarn. Um, and I need this cardigan uh, while I was already uh, recording this podcast. So some of you may remember this uh, cardigan, but it's cooling down a bit and I'm finally wearing it. I do, by the way, really love how high this neck band comes up in my neck because a lot of cardigans and sweaters that I've knit, they seem to have like low neckline. And um, because of that, I often feel like I also need to wear a shawl and um, I don't mind wearing a shawl, but at work I get a really cold neck and I work with the experimental setups. So I need to be able to bend over and grab things and align uh, and, and, and properly position things. And that's a little bit difficult if you have this shawl like draping of you all the time. Or maybe it's because I don't know how to, you know, I, how to position the shawl perfectly but in, in many situations I'm just struggling a bit so I take off my shawl because, because I get annoyed <laughs> with the shawl being in the way and uh, like uh, pushing things off the table which I'm uh, trying to work on and then I get annoyed by my cold neck and I put it back on and back off again and uh, <laughs> goes on like that <laughs> for several times a day. So I, I really like designs that have this high neckline. So uh, although I might modify quite a bit of this cardigan, this is a part that will definitely stay. So, <laughs> red over. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this, uh, this week uh, I've been working on three projects uh, and one of them is the huge <laughs> socks that I've been working on. They live in my project bag which uh, has been used quite a bit so um, I should probably give it a wash but uh, I haven't because I've, I've been constantly using it um, but here is the sock that I've been uh, knitting and it's nothing too special I think it's just a huge sock so it's size 49 European or 13 and 14 in UK and US and I can't remember which is which but it will be in the down bar so uh, if you're watching the screen now, you will probably see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, for a very uh, large beaded <laughs> guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically just a simple toe-up sock. So, I cast on here with a 
Turkish or maybe winding cast on and increased to, I think I'm knitting 80 stitches in the round, so quite a bit for my doing. Um, my own socks are typically knit on 60 stitches circumference and to be sure that they would fit I added a ribbing because a ribbing is just a little more stretchy so uh, because I don't have this guy uh, <laughs> with me <laughs> uh, in fact I've never seen this guy uh, so I, I thought it would be nice if I add some stretchiness in, in there uh, through a ribbing then if they are a bit too wide then the, the ribbing will pull the stitches together anyway so that it will still kind of stay on and if it's a bit on the smallest side then it will mostly stretch there uh, without like making these stitches go all white. So I thought it was a very nice feature and for the leg I know that his legs have a circumference that is three centimeters or slightly over one inch less in circumference than his feet and um, that's why I'm I've started doing the ribbing on the back side of the leg as well but if I do a pattern on the leg of sock um, I always do a, a short row heel so this is just a wrap and turn short row heel and I um, I don't know how well you will be able to see but somewhere here there should be kind of a triangle so I kind of make a gusset first and then I knit a heel flap here that's just back and forth and then I continue joining in, uh, knitting in the round so you can see that the uh, pattern has been shifted but I thought it would, would be okay uh, for these socks to because it's, it's still like it, it comes back together in the blue so uh, it's actually quite funny that the, that the heel has the rainbow on, on the back side uh, yeah, I think that that looks quite cool so I didn't bother with trying to make the striping continue uh, as they otherwise would because I, I, I just like how this turned out anyway um, after I knit the heel flap I always knit a certain part uh, flat on the back side of the heel because I feel like if you are wearing shoes then your shoe will bend in somewhat uh, just over the heel and if there's a patterning on that part where your shoe is t touching your heels then that can be really annoying because pattern just well, I, th I, I, I tend to get blisters if I have a pattern starting too low on the heel. So I move that up a little and then start the pattern on the back side of the leg uh, just somewhat higher than the heel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's slow going because, well, these socks are simply huge. I think I, I haven't weighed this actually, but I think I used about as much yarn now for this one sock as I would for one and a half socks for myself so um, yeah uh, it just takes a little longer to finish these socks and I'm only really knitting on these socks uh, while I'm commuting to work and back um, yeah because it's, it's an easy knit and it's easily portable so that's why I do it there <laughs> So, um, yeah, then there is an, a sewing project that I've been working on this week, but I can't really show it to you because I've been working on it and I've mostly been frustrated with it because I'm trying to make a new coat. So I uh, recently, uh, I parked my bike in, in the train station and we have this bicycle parking spot and um, I was trying to lock my bike and then um, the pocket on the side of my uh, jacket it's a bit lower but I think I will need to hold my hand a li little bit higher um, <laughs> to show you um, it got stuck behind I think just the saddle of my uh, bicycle and I moved back uh, a little bit too fast because I wanted to hurry and catch the train and I ripped open the side of my coat yeah so that's the store bought coat but I wanted to replace it with a handmade coat. So I've stitched up the gap as best as I could. But um, uh, yeah, I, I really want a new coat. So I've been trying to make one. And I have this magazine that has all these uh, jacket patterns in them. And uh, I, I, I wanted to, sh I would like to show you the magazine, but it's, 
in Dutch, so most of you probably wouldn't understand, so it's knit mode. Um, but I'm actually a bit frustrated with the pattern. Because in in this magazine there's like five different types of coats that you can make and they all use a certain combination of the same pattern pieces. So when you lay out the pattern pieces and try to to draw uh, your, your pattern pieces that you then cut out in patterning paper and then uh, after that you would like to cut them out uh, from the fabric. Uh, yeah, they say like um, cut out this piece and then uh, follow the lines for model uh, A or model B or whichever model you are trying to make. Uh, but that just means that because there are so many coats in that one single uh, magazine, there's so many lines and it's really confusing and I got really frustrated when trying to draw all the lines. So I was really happy that in two days work I managed to draw all the pattern pieces that I thought I needed and I think I have them complete, but I'm not really 100% sure. So, um, but then it took me another day of frustration, but I managed to cut out all the fabric pieces of the lining, just the lining, <laughs> and then another day's work to cut out the pieces of the actual fabric that will be outside of the coat. But because I don't think it's very interesting just to look at pattern pieces that are cut out of fabric, I won't show you. But hopefully after this weekend I will have some more time uh, to work on it. Or after this weekend, this weekend, uh, after recording this podcast, I will have some more time to work on it. And then maybe next week I will have something that at least looks somewhat like a code that I will be able to share. But I don't know. I think this has a fair chance of being my first completely ruined sewing project. Yeah. But because you ju don't just want to know about projects that aren't working out, I've also uh, started on another project. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about the yarn that I'm using. So uh, last weekend I thought, I'm always using commercial yarn actually for the projects. I, I tend to buy a lot of these gorgeous, uh, hand dyed yarns uh, you will see that they are different actually because uh, the ones that were previously there uh, yeah, uh, I will show you uh, in, in a bit but I tend to gravitate towards the commercial yarns because they are typically they come in skeins that you can knit from right away uh, like the like the opal that I used for the, for these socks that I just talk to you about this is opal uh, symphony and then or op opal symphony their tongue uh, symphony of the dreams I think uh, or symphony of a dream I don't know how you would pronounce it but um, they, they come in, in this kind of shape and I think most knitters will recognize this kind of shape and you can just pull the yarn from the center and uh, maybe you get a little bit of a yarn barf in the beginning but after that you're basically good to go and can knit from that. Um, but if you buy yarn in a hank like this, then you will first have to somehow make it into a ball or a cake or something to, um, yeah, to work with it. And honestly, if I get back home uh, after work, I just don't feel like winding a ball. I want to knit. <laughs> I don't uh, like, knitting or crochet is my hobby not winding cakes <laughs> so last weekend I spent something like four hours making this cake and the yarn is lovely don't get me wrong but I, I just don't particularly enjoy uh, caking I love to see how it turns out and I, I think this cake turned out pretty nice and even and I used a Nista pinna that I got from uh, Lily Pond Yarns. This yarn is Lily Pond Yarns in their peaches and cream colorway and I do have their label here so I will show you. So here's the label of Lily Pond Yarns and I managed to get a bit of a fold in, in the label. So this is a um, merino nylon uh, high twist fingering weight yarn and yeah I'm I'm, I'm really happy with the uh, the color but it just it just took ages to uh, cake it up. I think I spent four hours on a single cake, so that's about 100 um, 
100 grams or, or meters per hour. Yeah, that's not a very fast rate if you want to cake up enough to make a cardigan or a sweater or something with it. And mind you, I'm not the biggest person in the world, so uh, I think I will get away with knitting a cardigan from just three skeins. And even I need um, yeah, hours and hours of, <laughs> of work to to uh, wind skein, so I, I, I didn't like that. So uh, next up I decided instead to uh, wind the rest of them just in balls by hand because this is a little bit faster. I think uh, this took me like three quarters of an hour to wind it into a ball, which is significantly faster than, <laughs> than winding it um, on a cake. And actually my boyfriend then helped me to wind the third skein into a ball as well and here it is so um, yeah uh, I, I think uh, my boyfriend uh, winds the yarn a little bit too tight but he is practicing and it's, it's so nice that he just helped me with that um, so we, we sat there both winding and winding the yarn mm -hmm. um, but it was really nice uh, that, that he wanted to help me and maybe if he is sometimes watching some a video or another he can just help me with <laughs> winding yarn uh, so that would be very nice so um, that's not the only yarn that I have been winding I've also been winding these two balls uh, these are actually commercial yarn <laughs> so sometimes commercial yarn also comes in in hanks and this is uh, I think BC Garn uh, Samilla and I purchased this when I was in southern Germany uh, last summer for the wedding of my cousin uh, and I can't remember the colorway numbers, but I will pop them in the screen because Actually, I don't know which one is which but I do know which two numbers they are and I think from a picture You would be able to distinguish like yellow and dark green <laughs> So uh, I'm planning on making some mittens out of these um, Yeah, so probably after I uh, finished uh, after I finish the socks that I'm working on, I will need another travel project and I might just make mittens. That's the plan at least. Um, but let's get back to the lily pond yarns because uh, as you may have already seen, this game that my boyfriend won um, is in a project. And you guys, I should have pulled this to a proper position for the needles to start with, but here is the beginning of the cardigan that I'm trying to knit. So I hope this will be focused, but uh, yeah. So I'm knitting another Dussala cardigan. Uh, I've recently knit a Dussala cardigan out of my own hand spun, and it is a ziggurat from the book by Asa Tricosa. But I um, wanted to do something more special and you will probably be able to tell like here there is some lace going on which wasn't going on in my previous Dussala cardigan and on the back there's also going to be a panel of lace running down the back and on the other side of course as well because I like my cardigans to be somewhat symmetrical um, it won't be symmetrical because uh, like the lace will be starting from the top right on both sides and you know and the lace panels I did not bother to try and make them symmetrical just put the same uh, lace panel on both sides and I thought that would be good enough um, but yeah I'm using my Japanese knitting stitch Bible so I can't remember when exactly but I really uh, liked the uh, Japanese knitting stitch Bible and I think it was a birthday present that was somewhat belated but I got this um, stitch uh, pattern book uh, I have it here so uh, Japanese knitting stitch Bible and I've marked the page where I'm working at and there's so many pretty stitch patterns I think on the inside of the book for instance these are some of the gorgeous gorgeous cabley lacy uh, patterns that uh, are made by uh, Hitomi Shida if I pronounce that somewhat right um, but I just like the look of these things and I thought I want a cardigan with those kind of cables on them so uh, I picked a pattern from there, uh, just one pattern because I thought that was intricate enough. Um, I think I'm working with a 28 stitch and 18 row repeat. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking at the chart, especially now that I haven't 
even completed one chart of the lace yet. Um, so I have this book with me <laughs> to to work on this cardigan and the cigarette. Yes, I've made a, uh, the sala before, but no, my memory is not that good that I can just remember what to do, especially in the setup part around in the neck. So uh, yeah, I'm working with these two books open, uh, bo both opened at a specific page and then um, trying to make a cardigan from that. And you guys, it's definitely not a travel friendly project because you know, <laughs> you need two well quite substantial books to uh, <laughs> to do this uh, maybe i could like make a scan of each and then just make use loose papers but i think that will be even worse in my bag because i would lose them so uh, yeah yeah i just i i'm not very far ahead in this cardigan but i don't need to be i i really love how this is turning out and you guys look at this yarn it's so so pretty how how it's variegated but all that nice and smooth and soft and dreamy colors uh, yeah I, I really like how that looks um, I may have to start alternating skeins with this I haven't done so so far I believe these three will be from the same dye lot but then still it's a good idea to um, alternate skeins especially with hand dyed yarns because you never know uh, even if they are in the same dye pot, uh, one skein may take some more dye than the other one and you will be able to tell. So this part of the bottom band on the neck, uh, the back neck, um, is actually done with a different piece of yarn. So that's from one of the other skeins. But for now I thought I, at least I want to have this setup bit uh, out of the way before I start alternating skeins because uh, in this bit you're knitting a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, short row uh, things etc. And I honestly I just couldn't be bothered uh, with the alternating skeins. Also just looking at the skeins, they may be somewhat different but I think they are very similar. So and each of them already has some variation in them so i might actually get away with not alternating at all um but i will make sure to at least alternate uh, a few rows before i run out of the first skein and maybe just before i have to split for the sleeves so that like it won't be a very hard transition if i have to use another skein after that so yeah, that's the three projects that I've been working on. I have a few more things to show you. So this week I've also been playing a little bit with the dye pot. So actually this, this yarn uh, I dyed last week. It is, um, it was uh, still drying when I recorded last week's episode. So I couldn't really show you back then. Uh, I don't know what happened with twisting the, this game. Um, don't think this is my greatest success story on that you guys it's difficult i don't know how everyone just seems to make perfect skeins if, if they sell hand dyed yarn but this is not necessarily easy but it's just um well i you may have seen the sock blank that i've made last week uh i i did this at the same time but the sock blank wasn't completely dry but i just wanted to show you but i put all the leftover blue dye that i had in the dye pot and um just put this uh, yarn in it uh, as well and then I just pushed on the, the leftover uh, purpley bits uh, too and I don't think there's really a lot of green in here but there may be some spots that have a hint of the greenish color but I, I, I actually think that I put the remainder of the green of the sock blank of last week uh, in the dye pot with the sock blank so to the background color of the uh, sock blank is slightly greenish and then I tried dyeing another color and I just love how this turned out this is uh, a minty green color and this is actually another type of yarn so that's part of the reason why it looks so much nicer I think um, this is a BFL nylon uh, yarn I uh, put an orange <laughs> A piece of cotton on it to to mark for myself this this is bfl nylon and this is a, a skein uh, of undyed yarn that i got last year from uh center class and so that's our gift giving uh, season so uh yeah 
uh, but because Sintra class is coming up again soon, uh, I just, you know, wanted to have used it before I had it for a year. So, uh, yeah, I, I just love how this minty color came out. And, um, yeah, it, I must say, it really looks a lot like a skein that I bought from Lily Bonjour so, uh, uh, some time ago. I did not plan on having it look that much like, but then again, I really like that color too. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to have made some of my own <laughs> uh, minty uh, colored yarn. And then again, I think, well... The recipe for this color was quite easy, so I guess more dyers will have made some col a color like this at some point, especially if you're trying to make uh, like a semi-solid. Um, yeah, there's gonna be more people who do something similar. I tried to do something like speckling with uh, a, a more intense variation of the minty green color, but I don't think that turned out very nice because well, it's just too... You can't really see it that much. But there is some hint of speckling going on. But I try to do some speckling. I only have liquid uh, acid dyes. And uh, I try to solve it in, in a salt. But that apparently is not the way to go if you want to, <laughs> to speckle yarn. So a bit of a failed experiment. But a new experience. So now I know that I don't have to do it like that if uh, if I want to do so so I can try something else maybe next time so uh, the last thing that I want to show you guys is uh, this yarn which added, was added to my collection of yarns uh, this week so I have a colleague who is from China and I uh, work uh, together with her a lot and she notes that I like knitting so um, she asked me if uh, she she could bring something from China for me and uh, I asked like yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some Chinese specialty yarn, uh, maybe something with bamboo or, or or something like that. But she came back with this and it is, um, well actually I got six skeins of this, um, I don't think she has any idea of how much uh, yarn you need to make any kind of project. And honestly, I haven't got a clue about the meterage of this because I, I, I'm pretty sure that it says 50 grams here, but I'm... I don't know if any of these are numbers for, for uh, how many meters or, or or anything like that, but uh, I can't really read that. Apparently it's uh, cotton and silk blend, but my friend uh, or my colleague has no idea of uh, yarn things in uh, like how that works. So she uh, translated some of these sign so I wouldn't even know how to type these signs in, in Google but <laughs> luckily she does and um, she said like uh, one of them was uh, mulberry silk and uh, another one was long staple mercerized cotton and she was like this is a translation that doesn't make sense at all and I was like yeah that does make sense for a knitter it does make sense <laughs> I, I I just think it's so sweet that she thought of me and I really like the colors as well. So this is this blue and this and this greenish color. It's it's just very nice. And I thought it was so nice of her to think of me uh, while she was there. I mean, she just had like one big bag of luggage to take back with her, and she managed to to bring a box with six skeins of yarn for me, and that that's just amazing. So I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, thank you. Okay, so one more thing that I want to uh, tell you guys. Uh, since I've been working full time since the end of July this year, and uh, this podcast has been going on for a lot longer, um, but I've set a fixed uploading schedule for um, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Uh, in my time zone. So that's GMT plus one in the winter and GMT plus two in the uh, in the summertime. Um, but I find myself often too tired to record a podcast on Friday evening and um, then if I have anything to do on a Friday evening then I will have to record on Saturday morning and I find it something somewhat too stressful sometimes that I have to record and edit and do everything for this podcast before 1 p.m. Uh, because that's when I want to have it uploaded and ready to go for you guys. 
So I decided to give myself a little bit more leeway and uh, postpone the uh, uploading schedule. And I think it will be like around 7 p.m. Uh, that I will be uh, uploading. So that's still in GMT plus one in the winter time and in the summertime uh, plus in GMT plus two. Um, and from that you, you will have to calculate yourself uh, what it will be. So I will still be uploading on Saturday, but I, I just feel like it's that much more enjoyable for me to record this podcast if I just uh, allow myself to wake up slowly on, on a Saturday and just slowly get everything together and just, you know, I have a little bit more of leeway uh, as to when I record this podcast because... Um, I wanted I wanted to stay fun to to do this and uh, it's definitely a lot of fun to to make and upload this podcast and even more so to have some conversation going on with you guys so uh, that really means a lot to me but I just have to take some pressure off for myself and um, record uh, when, when it feels good for me like uh, I don't want to have to put an alarm on one of my two free days in a week uh, to start recording early and everything and rush until I reach my 1 p.m. deadline and sometimes I just get horribly close so uh, you may not notice but uh, I've always put my recordings on scheduled upload so uh, I will upload them before <laughs> 1 p.m. and then uh, they will go live on 1 p.m. but I I might still sometimes ma manage to do uh, the recording before 1 uh, and uploading before 1 p.m. but I just want to give myself some leeway and uh, make that 7 p.m. from now on and uh, yeah as you guys will see this podcast is already a little bit later uh, around 7 p.m. <laughs> if everything goes uh, goes well today um, and I hope you guys won't mind, um, and if you do, well, I'm sorry, this is just uh, how it's going to be from, from now on, from now on, at least, to, to see if I like this better. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for understanding uh, that this shift in schedule, but now at least you know that uh, you don't have to worry if you don't see it coming uh, at, at the time that you were used to uh, see my podcast uh, arriving online, but uh, it will just be a little bit later. So I think that was all that I wanted to share with you this week. I just got interrupted because my boyfriend received a package, but he's not at home, which makes it easier for me to record a podcast, but uh, yeah. It meant a little bit of an interruption. Anyway, so uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. And uh, I hope you all have a lovely week. Uh, so bye.